In this episode of Contributing to a Safer Ohio, we'll hear about a new program created to build partnerships across the state to enhance disaster planning, preparedness, response, and recovery. We'll also learn about a component of the Ohio Department of Public Safety responsible for licensing and regulating companies that provide investigation or security services. But first, we'll hear what Ohio is doing to stay prepared should a disaster strike. It's all coming up on this episode of Contributing to a Safer Ohio. Who is going to be there to help when a disaster hits? A major disaster like Hurricanes Katrina and Sandy, or like the Joplin, Missouri tornado, or Hurricanes Hugo, Rita, or Ike. Here in Ohio, we've been spared from the wrath of these super storms, though we did feel some effects from Sandy and the remnants of Ike. But how prepared is Ohio, and who is going to be there to help when disaster strikes? Ohio has a cadre of resources to bring to bear, as well as teams of dedicated men and women who plan, prepare, and practice for a day they hope will never come. Whether it's the Ohio National Guard, State Highway Patrol, local fire, police and EMS, search and rescue units, or state and county emergency management agencies, they are all working diligently to be ready when needed when they will spring into action to help Ohioans respond to and recover from a major disaster. We have greater coordination and collaboration with the Ohio National Guard. We've enhanced our information gathering to ensure enterprise-wide situational awareness. We've created Safer Ohio teams to understand and deal with the crisis as it unfolds. We have recently reorganized the Ohio Emergency Management Agency, creating offices for a quicker response so we can better support response efforts at the local level. We've continued to upgrade radio systems with a goal of interoperability so that responders from different jurisdictions can talk to each other in real time. We've strengthened our relationship with nonprofit organizations such as the American Red Cross and the Salvation Army. We've nurtured partnerships with key private sector allies because we know the government is not the only solution and that we are all in this together. And we've done all of this with one goal in mind, do all we can to make Ohio a safer place to live work and play. Many of these efforts were on display this spring at Buckeye Lake State Park, about 40 minutes east of Columbus. When the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers said the dam was in danger of failing, state and local first responders and emergency managers assured the local community that they were ready when needed. The Ohio Department of Natural Resources demoed a water rescue, and Ohio EMA's mobile communications tower and several local and state agencies' emergency response vehicles were on hand. The Ohio National Guard took water from the lake and converted it into drinkable water and also used two helicopters to hoist both a swimmer and victim from the land to safety. Director Bourne uh, asked for this initiative under the Safe Ohio program to have state and uh, public safety employees trained as the emergency resource team. And that emergency resource team has the benefit of helping the local EMAs if they need additional assistance. Uh, they get uh, shorthanded, sometimes a one-man team out of an EMA. They're going to need help with damage assessment, uh, volunteer reception centers, uh, donation management, any just-in-time training. In our society today, we have a limited amount of police, fire, and EMS. And the DPS ERT team is trained where they can go out and supplement that manpower and provide assistance to communities in need. The employees are the very uh, most important thing because they take time out of their actually Monday through Friday jobs. They come to the recruitment training to become a team member of the emergency resource team. And uh, some might say this might be their miscellaneous duties, but uh, it's more than that. The emphasis on the training, uh, we start out with actually taking care of yourself, taking care of your family because you can't be deployed and expected to go out and function if your family and your home isn't safe. Once we do that, we teach disaster medical operations, how to care for people that have been injured in a disaster. In this class especially, we work on victim extrication. Once our search and rescue teams find these victims, how can we extricate them to a safe place, get them stabilized to be moved to a hospital? We hope they take this information and they share it. They teach their kids, they teach their loved ones, because safety in Ohio is everybody's job. The state is making great strides to be better prepared to help your community when a disaster strikes. But there are small steps you can take that can help make a world of difference for you and your family. 
have an emergency preparedness kit, and a communication plan for your family. To learn more about these easy steps you can take, go to ready.ohio.gov. Ohio has 900 companies licensed to provide security and private investigation services throughout the state. Private Investigator Security Guard Services, or PISGS, is a division of the Ohio Department of Public Safety that licenses and regulates companies that provide investigation or security services. The licensing process ensures security providers are insured, that they are run by people with appropriate professional experience and by people without dangerous criminal backgrounds. When a company is to become licensed, we want to make sure that there's somebody that uh, can represent the company that has the uh, qualifications and the experience and knowledge um, of the security uh, guard business as well as private investigative business. Also that they carry an insurance policy and that criminal background checks are done. Hiring a security guard company is something that should be taken very seriously. If it isn't, it can have devastating effects. Because of the liability laws and, and legal issues and so on, having good security is just essential. When I took this uh, job over about uh, 10 years ago, and I had been involved before, in fact I was a beer captain for a good 10 years, so I was aware of security issues, uh, but I did not know uh, necessarily what was involved in getting a security company. And as it turned out, uh, I had some issues with one of the prior companies that we had here, and I, I had been getting some solicitations from another company interested in our business, and I hired them a few years ago only to find out by the second year that they only did not only perform, but they weren't licensed at all. Educating both the public and the industry is part of PISGS's mission. PISGS can be an informational resource for you, whether you are hiring a security provider or you are a security provider with questions about licensing or registration. It's important that everyone is aware and asking the right questions. Unfortunately, uh, the laws that pertain to security guards and private investigators in the state of Ohio are not well known. Um, our goal right now and our mission is to inform the public as much as possible that these laws exist. That way when private companies or event coordinators are shopping for security, they can make sure that they're getting a company that is licensed, that has insurance, that um, has employees that have background checks. Listen, this is something you need to pay attention to. If you haven't thought about it as important to your own event, it is, and, if, and even if you didn't think it was, it's important because the state looks after these things too, just to maintain a level of professionalism. The private security industry is the eyes and ears of our communities and often the first responders to crime. They provide security everywhere, malls, entertainment venues, schools, government buildings, critical infrastructure, among many others. Licensing is important. I think it's important for the security company to be to be licensed because that's recognized by the public and anybody who was thinking about hiring your services would want to know that you are licensed by the state so that they know that you are a credible company and that they're going to get the services that they're paying for. It's important for the citizens of Ohio to make sure that when you are going out into the public, whether it be a mall or a festival or you know some type of any other place of business, that you know that you are well protected by the security personnel that are on site. To find licensed providers and other information, please visit this website or call 614-466-4130. The Northern Ohio Public-Private Partnership Conference was held on June 23rd, marking the first regional meeting of the OP3 program. OP3 was created to build partnerships across the state by engaging state and local government agencies, businesses, industries, and associations in a collaborative effort to enhance disaster planning, preparedness, response, and recovery. When something bad happens, and unfortunately we know in life bad things happen, being able to recover and mitigate those damages is absolutely key. We recognized at the state 
that we had assets, resources, and people that we didn't know how to leverage as well as we should. The OP3 partnership includes nearly 200 businesses, government agencies, colleges, and associations. OP3 program partners play a vital role in supporting the Ohio Department of Public Safety's 472 initiative. When a disaster or an event happens, we want to start flowing resources within four hours to the communities that are in need. We want to be able to help sustain that for them up to 72 hours if, in fact, then when federal, so federal resources can be turned on or can start to flow. This project is designed to get supplies necessary for life into affected areas quickly and efficiently. We want to make sure that we are helping with basic, critical, immediate life needs while people are starting to recover and give our partners the opportunity to get ready for people coming in, the long-term response, the recovery. Because truly, what we want to do is make sure that People are going to you in their areas at their own time to recover. Director John Bourne also announced the new emergency partner credentialing system. The system is part of the 472 initiative designed to make it easier for certain private sector partners to deliver life-sustaining materials in restricted areas during an emergency. We want to make sure that you're able to get through those checkpoints, those law enforcement and emergency checkpoints, in a way that we feel comfortable with telling our law enforcement partners, you have been vetted, you are legitimate, and you should be allowed to get through. Partners that choose to participate in the credentialing system will be able to seek free credentials through Ohio Homeland Security. The credentialing system will be accessed through the Communication and Information Management System, also known as SIMS, the Ohio Homeland Security's centralized source for information sharing. So if something is happening around the state that you want information on, you should be able to have information the same as I do. This nationally unique program is expected to be implemented by January 1st, 2016.